Welcome to the Monday, February the 5th, 2024 meeting of the Montpelier Design and Review Committee. We'll let members and staff introduce themselves. Benjamin Cheney, member. Meredith Crandall, staff. Steve Everett, member. Martha Smirsky, member. Liz Pritchett, member. Rebecca. William Russell. Go ahead. Rebecca Owens, member. William Russell, member. Okay, I will at this point let Meredith review the remote meeting procedures and process. Okay. Um, I just am going to make one request. Is there for Orca? Is there any way to shift the camera? Oh, you just did it. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> You're awesome. Uh, okay, so I am going to be sharing my screen here in just a second. I'm out of practice doing this all on one little screen. All right, so the stuff on the screen is more for people who are watching this via the live stream. I think everybody has gone through the spiel at least once so far now. Um, so for anyone viewing tonight's design review committee meeting via Orca Media, you can participate in tonight's discussion via the Zoom platform through either video or telephone access options. Um, so if you wanted to have the full video experience, you can type this link into your web browser um, and I'll get a little notification that you wanna come into the meeting. Um, alternatively, you can dial in using this phone number and when prompted, put in this meeting ID. Um, and again, I'll have a prompt to let you into the meeting. Um, if anyone is having problems accessing the meeting, please email me at mcrandall at montpelier-vt.org. Um, for anyone attending via Zoom, turning your video on is optional. And if you are having problems with delays or hearing everything properly, um, actually turning off your video can make a big difference and make sure that at least the sound is nice and clear. Um, uh, we also ask that everyone please keep your microphone on mute when you're not speaking. Um, this helps reduce background noise. Um, reminder that the Zoom chat function should be used only for troubleshooting or logistics questions. Um, I'm going to skip over a bunch of the other stuff because right now all we have on remotely are members and ORCA. Um, if somebody from the public comes in, um, especially if it's somebody they don't recognize, do be aware that I may... Um, shut down things and have everybody muted until I can determine exactly who it is and make sure that they're they're on for a particular for a committee item. Um, all right. And then please note that in the event the public is unable to access this meeting and I would find that out via my email, um, the meeting will need to be continued to a time, place and certain. All right. I will hand the meeting back over to the chair. At this point, if Members have had a chance to look at the agenda. Do I hear a motion to approve the agenda? So moved. And I'll second it. This is Martha. All in favor of the agenda, speak your names. Ben. Martha. Liz. Stephen. And William, you'll be at the, the fifth vote because Rebecca's not voting tonight. I think William's muted. Yep. William, sorry. It's okay. Thanks. Okay, thank you. At this point, we move to officer elections. And did you have a comment from Eric? Uh, yes. So um, Eric's not here tonight. He did say that if no one was interested in being vice chair, um, he'd be willing to to continue as vice chair um, until somebody was willing to step up, but he is quite happy to have somebody else take that role at this point. Um, he definitely wants to stay a member of the committee, but he's happy to relinquish the vice chair role. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to make sure everybody was aware of that. Does anyone want to offer any <laughs> I'm willing to step into that role if nobody else has interest in that. Would you like to be chairman? No. <laughs> <laughs> that was fairly clear. <laughs> no, nobody, nobody has expressed an interest in being the chair at this point. 
Are you sure nobody <laughs> wants to step up and take a turn? No, I'm going to make a tea. I'm going to make a motion that Steve be continue as chair. <laughs> okay, all, all in favor. Oh, I, we need a I'll, second. I'll I'll, I'll hang in there. We okay. need a second. Okay, you're agreeing. So it, we need a second though. I'll second that. All in favor of of me. <laughs> Speak your name. Ben. Martha. Liz. William. That was pretty quick. <laughs> 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 okay. At this point, I'll nominate uh, Ben as vice chair. Do I hear and a second? I'll second it. This is Martha. All in favor of Ben, speak your names. Martha. Liz. William. Steve. Do I vote for myself? You can. You can abstain. To I'll abstain. <laughs> you you passed anyway. <laughs> Okay, congratulations. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you both. Okay. Unless anybody has anything else to add at this point, we can move to the first application for 4 Cedar Street. On our applicant for Cedar Street LLC, new window for second floor egress. So do make make sure make sure you're close to the microphone. You can shift the microphone a little bit if you need to. I don't know. Uh, I'm John Riley. I'm a member of Four Cedar Street LLC, and I'm here tonight for the applicant. Sean S H A W N. Uh, J O H N. Oh, J O H. Oh, John. I'm sorry. I thought you said Sean. Spell your last name. R I L E Y. Okay. Thanks for coming. And describe your application for the second floor egress window. Uh, thank you. Um, so. Um, my wife, uh, Ellen, and I are the members of Four Cedar Street. Um, it's a single unit residential property here in Montpelier. Uh, we purchased it. Uh, we closed at the end of December, but didn't take possession until I think it was January 20th. So um, we plan to lease the property uh, to our son, um, who uh, has a voucher through Montpelier Housing. Uh, and one of their requirements was that there be a second means of egress uh, for uh, one of the upstairs bedrooms. Uh, so um, we had ordered a window, we had lined up a contractor, and uh, I stopped in to visit Meredith and Audra to say, do we need any kind of a permit? Uh, I probably should have done that earlier because... Um, we were starting construction that day, maybe about two weeks ago. So um, the photo you look, you're looking at the uh, before photo uh, was from the Lister's card. Uh, I think the city probably took it as part of the 2023 reappraisal that shows um, the before uh, condition. Uh, and then I took some photos um, and submitted them uh, showing the work in progress, the new window. Uh, and you can see the ladders where the carpenter um, had installed it. Um, and I think there's some photos from the inside depicting um, the window. Um, the particular property, it's um, there's a retaining wall on, I guess it would be the north facing uh, side of the house, which you can't see here, but it's where, um, you know, it drops down maybe another five feet. So if that egress window was on the six to eight Cedar Street side, it would be a pretty significant drop if there was a fire and somebody had to get out. So um, uh, the new window is three by four. It meets the egress standards. Uh, it's been inspected by uh, both Montpelier Housing Authority and Upper Valley Services, and they've approved it um, as meeting their safety requirements. So, um, you, you know, I did a quick look at the design review criteria. Um, it's a nice little house, but I don't know that there's anything specifically historic about it. Um, the existing windows um, and entrances have very little decorative trim or uh, things like that. So um, 
we're here to uh, seek the committee's approval for uh, the window. Uh, John, are there more than one unit in that building? Just one unit, okay. two bedrooms upstairs. Okay. It's uh, 1,200 square feet, 600 on the first floor and 600 on the second floor. Okay. Or less. Right, and it's not a contributing um, structure in the Montpelier Historic District. I think it was originally a carriage barn. That's my understanding. Yeah, there was a, uh, we've been told there was a fire. In fact, uh, we saw evidence of it as we, um, you know, cut into the wall to create the new window opening. Um, and then it was renovated maybe in the late 1980s, uh, thereabouts. Uh, it was connected to the building to the front to Cedar Street. Um, and I think the owners of two and four uh, created a condominium in the late 1990s because they couldn't separately convey the residential structures. So um, it's actually a two unit condominium or part of a two unit condominium. Thank you. Quick question from the window. Is there a ladder or something in order to get down or is it just required that there be an opening there to access for say the fire department? My understanding there, there's no requirement for a ladder or, or a rope or some means of descending. The assumption is the fire department would respond and you could jump out the window or uh, drop, I guess. Yeah, it's been a while since I've read the the residential code, but I believe I believe you know, that this is actually a, a secondary means of escape um, by the by the code rather than egress, which typically residential codes allow the building inspector would have jurisdiction over that we you know we wouldn't um but just in case anyone asks it it might be more accurate to describe it a as a means of escape one option and we we have a, a unit with a similar situation they make a very nice unit that right in front of the window it's a it's a window seat. The top flips backwards, and inside there's a fire ladder. And you crank open the window. And you flip the the window seat back. You take the fire ladder out and you throw it out the window, and it goes down and hangs down to the ground. Hmm. And it's a pretty handy unit. And it's not super expensive. Uh, and and again, that's as long as the code doesn't require it, but that's another option for you that gives you an easy means of getting out Yeah. in case you decide to do that. And again, it's built as a window seat and it literally bolts to the floor. And then again, inside it, the top flips out. So instead of sitting on it, you just flip it out. The ladder's inside, you take it, throw it out the window and it comes down and you can climb out. And that product would be called like a window seat? Window seat fire ladder. Okay. We'll look into it. And again, that just, we, we have one. It works pretty well. I actually tried it. Of course you did. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's good to know because you don't want to wait until an emergency. And it actually has standoffs. You can get it. It has standoffs. So it holds the ladder away from the building so that you actually have a place to put your feet as you climb down. Okay. Um, so just a little note, Steve, I did mess up on this um, form and that I left the four historic structures stuff in here because I forgot that it's non-contributing. So all the okay. historic structures extras in here, you can just X off. Okay. Um, I'll just circle NA on those. Well, I mean, the, you still have the base, you still have the base standard that yes. applies. It's just, yeah, the... The or historic, historic structures. Uh, the historic add-ons. Okay. And, and well, those elevated will, criteria don't apply. Those will be acceptable anyway. Yeah. But, any the any members have any questions, comments, or suggestions? No. I don't know that 
I mean, my only comment is it's always a bummer when we get things that come to us that have already been built. Yeah. And no. I, there's no, <laughs> it's just that that's a bummer. And yeah. that's my comment. And, and my apologies. Um, I live in a rural town. I'm on the zoning board. I'm the chair of the zoning board. And we don't have design review. The work we're doing is largely interior. Yeah. It was kind of an after the fact whether we even needed a permit. So uh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, no, no, that's okay. It's not the first time it's happened. <laughs> yes, it's I did. <laughs> well, anyway, we'll move forward with your application. We have to read through a set of criteria for all projects, exterior design and materials of new construction or alterations of existing buildings shall be consistent and compatible with the characteristics of the existing building or other properties in the district or historic structures, even though this doesn't fit under the historic structure criteria, removal of historic materials or alteration of features and spaces that characterize an historic property shall be avoided Character defining features, finishes, and construction techniques or examples of craftsmanship that characterize an historic building shall be preserved. Deteriorated defining features shall be repaired rather than replaced. Uh, I'll just move forward. Any treatments that cause damage not apply here. So in this particular case, we'll just call it acceptable within the that criteria. Or existing building shall be recognized as a physical record of their time, place, and use for historic structures. And again, we'll call that not applicable here if it's if it doesn't fit. Or are you saying it does fit the what okay? The, yes. A subset that applies. A subset. So it's just you can just X out that historic structures bit. Okay. You still have to apply what's in bold, the existing buildings. Shall be recognized okay. as a physical so record we'll of the call, time, place, we'll and call use. That, we'll call that acceptable. Yeah. Proposed landscaping, not applicable. Location, appearance of utilities, mechanical equipment, not applicable. Alterations to buildings called for by public safety, accessibility, and fire codes shall be designed to maintain the character of the construction materials and features to the maximum extent feasible, acceptable. Moving down, proportion, compatibility of relationship between width and height of facades, as well as relationship of width to height of windows and doors, acceptable at this location for that purpose. Rhythm, the visual patterns established by the alterations of solid walls and openings, windows and doors, and the facade of buildings shall, be, shall create a rhythm, acceptable. Roof shape and equipment, not applicable. Architectural features, including but not limited to cornices, windows, shutters, fan lights, entablature, trim, and other forms of molding or character defining detailing prevailing on the existing building shall be considered in the alteration of a building. Again, for historic structures, architectural features shall not duplicate but shall respect, and in this case, that's acceptable within that category. And, then and uh, last uh, lastly, so when does... 18 are only for historic structures, so that's one I messed up. So there's no 17 and 18 so applicable today. Not applicable. Yeah. And based on those criteria, all in favor of the application, speak your names. Ben. Uh, this is Martha. I say yes. Liz, yes. William, yes. Steve, yes. So we have five to zero in favor. So you're here. So we'll have you sign this form, John, once Steve's done. And then um, we should be able to get this permit out tomorrow. Awesome. Um, join us to email you when it's ready and you want to just come pick it up. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Since you're going to come right up. around the corner. <laughs> Sign just below my name on that box there. Okay. Thank you. Awesome. 
And okay. Meredith, I think the interior work where we opened up the wall is pretty yeah. much done. Okay, so that's all with Michelle Savory. So that'll be the building permit part. So she'll she um just email her when yeah. she would like to come look at it. Yep. Okay. Email Michelle and set up a time for her to come take a peek. Great. And then that's okay. Um they'll need to be you'll probably need to do the whole certificate of occupancy process. There's an extra form that came with your building permit packet. Um you fill that out to attest that everything's done and tally up what the actual cost was. Yep. Um but you can email Michelle and let her know and she'll give you this particulars. Perfect. Awesome. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for coming and Thanks. good luck with your with the finish of your project. Thank you. Has everyone had a chance to look at the minutes from January the sixteenth? Um Yes, and I make a motion to accept the minutes the way they're written. I'll second that, Liz. All in favor of the minutes, speak your names. Martha. Liz. William. That's four. So minutes are approved. Does anyone have any other business at this point? I just wanted to welcome Rebecca and William. I hadn't introduced myself. This is Liz. Hello. Yes, welcome to the group. It's nice to have everybody, everybody having met now. We'll do some more in-person stuff. Yes, we have a uh, a full group now. We do. We do. We we should be in city council chambers um, from now on, unless there's an application that is really popular <laughs> or not popular, um, in which case we'll have to find a, a bigger space either in the senior center or um, maybe in the high school if it's really crazy. Um, but hopefully the senior center would have enough space um, because there's not really there's not room for more than like 10 people they have more chairs than that in here but then everybody's really wedged in um and especially in the winter when we can't open the windows we're not really interested in packing them in like sardines <laughs> not anymore and again the next meeting is tuesday the 20th following president's weekend and president's day it is it is i don't i don't think i actually have an application yet but they as long as they come in by what next Monday, um, they can get on the agenda. So I bet we'll have something. If no one has anything else, do I hear a motion to adjourn? So moved. And this is Martha, I'll second it. All in favor of adjournment, speak your names. Ben. Martha. Liz. William. <laughs> <laughs> That's everybody. I think we got everybody. Yep. <laughs> simultaneously. <laughs> Thank you all for coming. Have a nice evening. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Good night.